Hey guys, so today I wanted to address something that was said in the comments and it was in comment in my video about the person who was disqualified for not accepting a bribe and not reporting to a judge that a bribe was given because he felt like it was a joke. Now that has me going back in time and I kind of wonder like why is that such a big deal given the fact that splitting prize pools and that's what I'm used to like at FNM or pre-release when we don't want to play out we just split the prize pool and we go home. Now I read this article and it's only from a year ago so it's not from like a different era it's not from the Mike Long era where he would stand on his chair and look over to see what your cards were. This is from a recent era of magic from Eric Froelich. Eric Froelich and his wife they are probably the they really don't like MTG headquarters. I'm pretty sure they don't like me and they're not gonna like me after I make this video. They expect non-pro players to concede to them. Let me read this again. They expect and have written articles by themselves, not forced to write articles. They are so arrogant and egotistical that they wrote articles where they expect people to concede to them because they're magic pros. I don't think anyone in this situation, had, this is his, his article, have unearned privileges that other players don't have. Do they have privileges? Yeah, probably, but they are very much earned. So I was in round 14 and then, and then he goes on and talks about like, yes, if it was common knowledge that if a magic pro asks you to concede, you can say, yep, yep, um, yep, yep. I'm going to concede to you, Magic Pro, because you're awesome and thank you so much. This What happened was he was facing a guy who was undefeated, who wasn't a Magic Pro, didn't have the, quote, friends and privileges that Eric had. And Eric just told him, hey, you should concede. How is that different from like... And GP Houston, both people got disqualified and yes, the person who joked about the bribe, you can make an argument that he shouldn't have made that joke. But a person who thought it was a joke, I mean, Reddit is all on him and they're blaming him for this. Yet we have Eric, he published, and this was Grand Prix Houston from 2016, I believe. He published that he was playing his opponent, Mark Jacobson, and he told him, you should concede to me so I can get into the top eight. He opted to play and beat Froelich two to zero. And then Froelich went on to lose the next match as well, barely missing a stop, a spot in the top eight. Now, clearly this offended Eric because Eric, who finished in 11th, was this guy... Who is this guy and why doesn't he just concede to me, Eric, the pro magic player? Because I'm so important. This is why I don't give any credence to pro magic players. First of all, you're not making all that much money. Like, let's be honest here. Maybe one of you breaks over six figures. You don't make as much as Tolarian for sure. I I'm almost certain of this fact. Unless you win like a World Cup or something like that. But that prize is so, it's not guaranteed money. It's not hourly money. The only people making money are people doing content. And the same with MTG Finance. But anyway, he uses the word equity. And he uses the fact that maybe it's a common practice among pro players, in which case Frolic has good reason to expect it. Here is Frolic answering questions. How can you even have the expectation of someone conceding to you? I absolutely have no expectation of someone conceding to me. Everyone can do what's best for them. For many people, conceding is actually what's best for them. Let me read you that again. Conceding is actually what's best for them. It builds up goodwill where someone will go far out of their way to help you in the future. By attempting to dream crush you, you can guarantee the opposite will happen. Players may go out their way to try to dream crush you, knowing that you will be doing it to them if the situation rises. 
this is Eric. I mean, this is like this is unprovoked. Like it's not anyone's like a police officer like brought him in. It's like what's going on? Our magic judge. This is what he's naturally feels that he as a magic pro should be able to tell someone to concede and they should concede otherwise he's going to hit them with venom later he's going to dream crush them he's going to tell all his friends to dream crush them just because he want to concede eric if he if this guy jacob conceded to eric eric would be taking someone else's place in the top eight eric has no problem with that because he's a magic pro are you angry about the situation? Short answer is an easy no. But he just said he was angry. He said that he's going to try to dream crush them. He's going to tell all of his friends to dream crush Jacob for not conceding. Sometimes conceding is the best way. What advantages, like, does Eric even remember Jacob? Is Jacob, like, a Houstonian native? Who This is his only GP? Like, what is going on here? You see such a dichotomy between Magic Pro players and the regular players. How are regular players treated? Disqualification. You lost your money. Get out of here, you trash. Pro players? Oh, you should concede. You really should consider it because of all the alliances and friendships you can make by conceding. Are you going to concede? Okay, if you don't concede, we're going to ruin your life. We're going to dream crush you every step of the way. What the blank? Like, this is our game? Like, come on. I don't take pro magic seriously. Like, pro magic is the most lame of all magic formats, right? You talk about standard, you talk about standard's pretty lame, but pro magic is people grinding it, people looking for every single way to DQ you. And in GP Houston, we had a dude, we had a dude who was probably casual enough to think that it was a joke and didn't really want to do anything. And then he made it, he was too old, he was going to top eight, DQ'd to make room for another pro so people can write it in the articles. Like, you think I'm making this up? This is the way magic has always been. This is the way YouTube has always been. Big YouTubers smack little YouTubers all the time. I stay out of this for the most part because I don't care. Like, I have a business to run, I have employees, I'm gonna make an employee update video. I haven't paid myself in two months, but all my employees have been well-fed and well-paid. And um, I have over 200 resumes for the job that is currently open, fanteachingline.com, and I will talk a little bit about what I'm looking for. I have some really good resumes, and I think I'm gonna hire in March, but I wanna start collecting resumes right now oh i'm totally out of the uh anyway oh, let's read it this is the same guy who people in their local area and his local area dci ban because they openly called him a piece of shit newsflash he is a giant piece of shit and players in his local area know that better than most anyone he was openly vile he received it in return and only the other party ended up banned for things while outside of magic Efro is human garbage. So you look at what, I mean, it's kind of funny, right? The last GP Houston, Efro writes an angry article about a person who didn't concede to him because he was a magic pro and he was going to hit them with dream crusting. And, you know, now we have a situation where you have, I assume, a more casual player and he is banned disqualified he loses a thousand dollars he loses top eight he loses he two o's he does not accept the bribe we know that for a fact and he's disqualified if he was efro guess what he's not going to be treated the same way i want to keep telling you this until you guys get it i know some of you do but some of you might not people are treated differently in our community based not on how good, how much they love magic, not based on how much they help magic. You see how poorly unsleeved media is treated by pretty much everyone. And then you see Tulane Community College who's treated so well, free plane tickets to London, to multiple locations. Let's promote this popper event, which gets people to buy crappy cards. I'm the biggest benefactor of prop popper because I own hundreds of copies of these cards. And I'm gonna tell you it's a scam to sell you crappy cards. like. I have, n if I think about like who benefits most from Popper and Tolarian Community College, 
it would be Star City Games, Channel Fireball, and then lastly, collectors like me who just have large piles of junk. And then suddenly the junk is like a few dollars. And it's like, whoa, Distant Melodies? I have 400 copies of that. Because I couldn't sell the junk. I could not sell the blanking junk. That's why I have it. That's why these stores are trying to get you to play Popper and promote it. Because the tortured existence is the definition of junk. But now that it's a Popper deck, it's $2 now. Holy crap, this card that I couldn't even like burn for like heat. I couldn't even burn the card for like a, a small amount of heat is now worth $2? That's amazing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, I went on a rant again. Anyway, I'm going to try to focus my ending and my conclusion. My conclusion is Magic Pros treat other Magic players like crap. That's it. If you play against a Magic Pro or the most hated member, I okay, I absolutely hate this type of player, the aspiring professional Magic grinder. They call Judge all the time, and you're just trying to have fun. The, the, the event is very low expected value. It's just an F&M, and and they are just calling the Judge over for like everything. Yeah, some people make mistakes, but the way I look at it is, when I make a mistake, it's 50-50. Sometimes I pay my employees a little too much. And Sophie will tell you, I've tried to pay Sophie too much like four or five times since she's been working here. And that's typical because you make mistakes. And hourlies and stuff like it. I'm not going to go into details. Anyway, my point is Magic Pros really hate you. They hate other Magic players. And they expect you to concede. Anyway, bye guys.